I thank you, right honorable speaker. These are very curious moments for us, at least as in this country. And when these moments arise, as the presiding officer, take them in stride for the distinguished statesmen and women from uh, masqueraders, social climbers, and uh, the like. Because... Rob, I thought you were going to present the statement. Uh, that's the item we have. Yeah, right on the speaker, this is uh, the lob standing. Mm. And they can make a preamble to calm the nerves of uh, the House. And it's the reason why we are House of Parliament. Mm -hmm. For me, a presentation of the nature's old crumb work, I should really make the house feel that we are leaders. We are not here as robots uh, to do crumbed stuff. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. We have mentioned before in this house that our country ranks among the worst performers in as far as respecting, protecting, and promoting of human rights is concerned. On paper, this ranking may not ring a bell to the extent that we can make statements one after another without unsettling the tranquility of the perpetrators of injustice. On the other hand, right on the speaker, any step taken to expose and detail the scorecard leading to that ranking has always proved discomforting. We shall not relent from exposing the systemic human rights abuses and to plead for the full intervention of Parliament in enlisting this problem and finding a durable solution. Let us speak and colleagues should recall that we as legislators take oath of allegiance to the Constitution. We derive our authority from the relevant provisions and the spirit of the Constitution. And it is to the provision of the Constitution that we owe allegiance. To put this in context, let us know, Speaker, since the Constitution guarantees and mandates institutions of government to respect, protect, and promote human rights. Parliament ought to be the fort in the defense of the rights and the freedoms of the people. Now on 17th October 2023, I listened to and read the statement by the Minister of Internal Affairs relating to the arrival and illegal arrest of the Honorable Chagulani and hundreds of NUP supporters, thwarted NUP prayers and the dispersion of peaceful demonstrations in the Bali constituency. I submit that the missile statement was superficial, shallow, tainted with the material falsehoods and the misconstruction of the law and an attempt to justify repression and a cramp down of political dissent in this country. Right on the speaker, I do not find the minister's statement tenable since it has fallen short of addressing the wanton abuse of human rights, the growing state of impunity, general breakdown of the rule of law, and the shrinking civic space. For that, I invite this August House to consider that statement as rejected. Let us speak and colleagues. The minister's statement was further depicted, has further depicted government's reluctance to address and remedy human rights violations. I must state here that the minister's statement remains rejected, and I invite this honourable house to consider it as such. As a result of the infamous November 2020 shootings, Many people lost their lives, while well, others scores were maimed. Right on the speaker, government committed to have the matter investigated 
government committed to have the matter investigated and audited. However, all that has been archived was the, what has been achieved was the categorization of the victims in clusters of 20 persons who were shot and killed by stray bullets, whereas 34 others were shot and killed for allegedly participating in riots. Right on the speaker, the state categorized these citizens as rioters and victims, and that was all. The details of the report remain a top secret, only to the state, despite the commitment by the president to make this, the, the investigation public. It will be exactly three years next month since the angel of death was parachuted onto our streets by the very people charged with the duty to protect. Our memories are yet to lose the well-documented evil work of police patrol number, police patrol 99917 on the streets of Kampala for two solid days and the legacy of its occupants. Ugandans demand to know whether the occupants of that police vehicle were aliens without a trace, or their evil acts, a living testimony to the jungle in which we are entrapped. Right on the speaker, Mr. St. Frank, the bodyguard of Honorable Robert Chagrang St. Amu was intentionally knocked down by a military police vehicle HDDF 2382 at Musega Roundabout. There was no follow up with the family by any state agency three years after his killing. Or at least an excuse of an investigation report. Is the House of Parliament too timid and cowed to demand from the relevant authorities to make a proper count of both the happenings on the fateful days? as well as demanding justice to the families, vic victims' families. Right on the speaker, we have a good recollection of the many innocent Ugandans who were murdered, well as others who were grievously injured while on campaign trail of Honorable Chagulani Robert Sentam during the 2021 general elections. Those who were murdered in cold blood, right on the speaker, for the record of parliament, I repeat their names. Mr. Senator Frank Karibala, Michael Kalinda, A.K. Zige Wine, Rita Nabu Kenya, Daniel Cheyune, Ibrahim Motasa, Wile Kayondo of Kubi Roundabout, Sophie Kusasira of Kalore B Market, Baker Katoro Bwama, short from Namlanda, Martin Owekiche, Tusubira Elijah, Elijah Mukibi of Luero, Umaru Semakula of Entebe, Katwere Kimuli of Seta, Musi Alan of Kitet of Mukono, Peter Mwanje of Nansana, Mugera William of Wankulukuku, Batio Sofi of Obongi, Olion Robert of Obongi, Fungaro Moro of Obongi, Shaba Sheriff of Omongi, Akim Abire of Obongi, deliberately drowned by the UPDF on the 15th of January 2021. Bukere Nufu, abducted from Mukono municipality, murdered and dumped in a Kalangala. Right on the speaker. Right on the speaker. The relatives of the deceased are still reeling in bereavement, with no hope of ever receiving justice for the death of their loved ones. Right on the speaker. Who question whether the People's Parliament is complicit in these wanton murders? Right on the speaker the fate of missing Ugandans. On more than one occasion, right on the speaker, I have tabled to this honorable house a list of Ugandans missing over the last two to four years. These persons were picked from their workplaces and homes by state security agencies. Detailed accounts of their arrest and eventual disappearance have been provided by families and friends to whoever cared to listen only the state can account for their whereabouts. Right on the speaker, is parliament so frightened, complicit, or disinterested 
in demanding the government to prioritize human rights guarantees before anything else for the sake of building a durable human rights record and entrenching the rule of law. Did the parliament buy into the most frimsy and derogatory reasoning of government and its agencies that the addresses and next of kin of the missing persons are not known? But on the speaker, for the benefit of those who might, for one reason or another, missed out on the record of missing persons, for whom the government has ignored accountability and justice, the following Ugandans matter. Moses Simbabazi, Dennis Zimula, Shafiki Wangolo, Martin Rukwago, Peter Kiria, John Damulira, Michael Semudu, Mohamed Kanata, John Bosco Chibalama, who was last seen by the Prime Minister, Vincent Narumoso, Yuda Sempija, Musisi Mboa, Mustafa Luemba, Hassan Mubiru, Isima Sesazi, Godfrey Kisembo, George Kasumba, and Joseph Baguma. Right on speaker, those are missing Ugandans, and the parliament must, as of necessity and duty, be interested. Right on speaker, the victimization and targeted murder of Muslims. It has become fashionable in Uganda, right on speaker, today, for any attack or murder committed for the state, the state targets Muslims, whom they then indiscriminately kill or imprison without trial. For instance, following the twin bombings of Kampala on 16th of November 2021, Iwan Musa Mudasil alias Muse was shot dead at Wai Sekawempe division. On the same day, another suspect, Mohammed Kiriwa alias Musa Kiriwa, was shot dead in cold blood. The following day on 17th, November 2021, Sheikh Mohammed Abbas Chirevu was shot dead while on handcuffs by security agencies. This has been the case in many other high profile cases. Right on, speaker and colleagues. By law, any arresting officer is allowed reasonable or necessary force in effecting an arrest. The force employed should be proportional to the circumstances. The use of firearms during arrests amounts to excessive force if the suspect is unarmed. Even if, even if some of the suspects were purportedly evading arrest, the firearm should only be used to incapacitate the suspect and deter evasion, but not to kill. Right on the speaker, reports indicate that most of the victims who have been killed were allegedly handcuffed, were already handcuffed, and in essence pose no threat warranting use of a firearm. I would like to throw a quick challenge, right on speaker, to this honorable house to make a random check across any police cell or government prison. The shocking discovery will be that you have more Muslims in detention without trial. Right on speaker, does parliament consider every Muslim guilty of terrorism at birth? Why isn't Parliament not keenly following and investigating the witch hunt of Muslims using the fact of information available in so many government prisons and other illegal detention centers? What happened to the men in uniform who carried out these cold blood murders in broad daylight? Are they bound by the laws of the land? Right on speaker and colleagues, those of us who have not sat in any history class, at least have read some literature on Uganda's political history. Detention of people without trial was a common phenomenon in the immediate post-colonial regimes to deter citizens from agitation for freedoms and to contain and keep political opponents at bay. The 1995 constitution despite its current mutated state, has maintained and sustained the 48 hours rule under custody before one is produced before a competent court or released. The essence of this is to ensure speedy, speedy and fair trial and the avoidance of keeping innocent persons 
in a detention without just cause. Over the last three years, I told no speaker, the arrest and detention of several Ugandans without trial represents one of the worst abuses of human rights. In the worst case scenario, where the state desired to hold on to detainees without probable cause, trumped up charges have been raised against them. These charges cannot be sustained in any court for they lack premise. Many such victims, including civilians, have ended up in military courts in total violation of the Constitution. Let alone the Speaker. In 2021, over 500 NUP supporters were arrested in different parts of the country on various frimsy charges. Most of them were released after one year without trial. Some had to pay a ransom to gain their freedom from various military and civilian detention centers. In the group of 2021, Petrono Speaker, over 50 are still languishing in Chitalia and Luzira prisons without trial. 28 of these have been produced in the Army Court Martial, but their trial has never taken shape more than three years after their arrest, including a one Olivia Lutaya, a mother of three little children, who was arrested immediately after birth on the 8th of May, 2021. But, Mr. Speaker, the question of the day is the, is the People's Parliament dozing on duty, complicit or timid to demand of the military to account for their actions and the conduct in the court martial where hundreds of Ugandans are casually produced as a show without consequence. But Honourable Speaker, is the UPDF subordinate to the laws of the land or the country was long captured by a certain military junta without an official proclamation of the rule of of the rule by decree. Torture in detention facilities. Right on the speaker and the colleagues, the growing culture by the state security operators to torture suspects who are in detention. The case of Samuel Masereka, the registrar of NUP in the Kasese district. Of course, the famous case of Kakwenza Rukila Basaija are classic examples of classic examples for people who have ever been abducted by security personnel and subjected to despicable torturous treatment. Other similar incidents occurred in the recent past. For instance, when the Honorable Chagulanyi was arrested for Marua and the tortured while in detention, Honorable Zake was on several occasions faced it rough, faced it rough to the extent of almost losing his sight and many other incidents. We cannot say that these are isolated incidents. Right on the speaker, I sense danger on muzzling dissent voices, dissenting voices and delimiting space for holding accountable those in power. If this happened to, to them today and no statement or remedial action has been taken by government, how shall we all be spared if our turn comes? In the recent past, right on the speaker, this August House has condemned such violations, but same old habits have continued to manifest mainly through enforced disappearances, arbitrary illegal arrests and detention, torture in detention, detention without trial, unlawful detentions, extrajudicial killings, property grabbing, political persecution, assaulting journalists and other professionals in the course of duty, among others. <coughs> Right on the speaker, human rights violations in fishing communities. Right on the speaker, in 2017, the president of Uganda directed that the UPDF be deployed at major lakes in Uganda following a reported depletion of fish stocks due to over and illegal fishing. Following that deployment, the fishing communities have on numerous occasions cried out on gross violation of their rights by men and women in uniform. Reports of rape, defilement, destruction of properties, murders, and justified arrests, and illegal closure of many landing sites have been reported. Part of the response to these cries by parliament 
was the enactment of the Fisheries and Aquaculture Act 2013. The continued presence of the APDF and their selective actions against citizens must arouse the curiosity of any serious House of Parliament. Dr. Honourable Speaker, entire communities have been displaced, rendered homeless and jobless. Many persons have been killed, maimed and dishonored. Right Honourable Speaker, do the victims of these illegal actions have any representative in Parliament? <coughs> right Honourable Speaker, in the circumstances and absurd as described above, we have the following demands for the government to meet without excuse. One, full accountability for the November 2020 murders in Kampala and beyond, including the actions taken on police patrol 9917 and other listed above and, uh, and those others listed above whose occupants were well captured by different media houses and vigilant citizens shooting live ammunition towards unarmed citizens and intentional killing of opposition supporters in a questionable accidents. Two, accountability for all arrested Muslim clerics and ordinary Muslims throughout the country a case of a minority faith having majority prisoners. Three, accountability for all the reported 18 disappeared Ugandans as confirmed by the Uganda Human Rights Commission. Four, accountability for all political prisoners rotting in numerous jails without trial. Five, release of all political prisoners in the court martial. Six, demand that the Minister of Justice appears before Parliament to detail the House on detention without trial. Seven, accountability for killings by the military in the various fishing communities. I so pray, right on the speaker. Thank you, Rob.